finally, um, the winner. Um, and the winner is uh, Sue Kindon for her poem, Hearing Things. Um, it's, it's odd to, to um, judge a, a poetry competition, to have a kind of pile of work that you become, you know, you read and read, you don't do it all at once, you, you read through and you read through again, and you, you, you I'm, well, you know, I'm looking for reasons to keep people in the yes pile. Um, and it was the, the rich kind of weirdness of this poem that kept snagging me as I read and reread this pile of, of entries, this diminishing pile of entries. Um, sound and music is central to the poem, uh, as is reading. And the poem itself is a dense but delicate network of illusion. Um, it's interesting that Helen uh, quoted uh, Robert Pinsky, I think. Was it Robert Pinsky? About, about not, not about. Um, and I've, I've said this in my notes to this poem as well, that that with hearing things, Sue Kindon's poem, it doesn't seem too important to know what the poem is about. Um, and I put about in, in quotation marks because poems aren't, you know, about things. They, they are, you know? So it's not important to know what the poem is kind of about, but it's, it's, it's this poem's kind of pungent sense of, of encroaching loss, I think, of hearing, of bird life, is framed in language um, whose clarity is lovely, and this clarity makes the final lines even odder and more moving. So I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Sue uh, read her winning poem as well as read a, a few more of her, her, her other poems. So, Sue Kindon, come up and... So I'm looking at her. Thank you very much for that, Jacob. Um, I'm going to start by reading the winning poem. I'm then going to read a couple of, I'll tell you something about it. I'm then going to read a couple of other poems and I'm going to finish by reading the winning poem again because it's quite short. Uh, so, hearing things. Any other day, I'd have said these ledger lines meant nothing but I'm haunted by long shadows, not my own. And that's a sign it's wise to pay attention to the piper of shrill tunes or lose them forever. I can't track bats now or descant crickets and chiff chaffs are receding at a rate of demi-semi-quavers. So when I register a snatch of absent skylark, I skip the crutches, follow like a snake-charmed rat. And yes, there's a door of reckoning on the hillside. And no, I'm never coming back. I'm glad you don't think that you need to say what poems are about because when I tried to say what it was about, I didn't do very well. <laughs> I can tell you where it's come from, which is that I realised that I'm beginning to lose the, the ability to hear high sounds. And so if my husband would say to me, listen to that blackbird, and I'd say, what blackbird? Uh, so I know there's, there's things beginning to disappear, which is rather important to me. Um, and then this poem came to me in the voice of the boy on crutches that you may remember from the Pied Piper story um, when the Pied Piper took the children into the hill. The boy was left. But I think it's the boy grown older and wiser somehow. Um, I, I, I can't quite put my finger on that. And it's probably about other sorts of loss. Uh, and the last two lines... Uh, I think are replies to questions that we can't hear um, and I don't know if they're real or imagined questions but, but they're, they're out there somewhere and that's, those are the answers to them. So that's where it's come from but where it goes is rather up to you. Um, and I'd, I'd, at this point I would like to thank 
poets and players for organising the competition and this event and for making me so very welcome. I've been quite overwhelmed by the hospitality I've received here. Um, so thank you very much to all of you. Um, right. Uh, this poem, I've got a Manchester poem, so you have to have a Manchester poem, about the, the fire window at Manchester Cathedral, which um, has twice been destroyed, once in the Second World War and once by a bomb in the middle of Manchester, and has been reconstructed. So this is called Déjà Vu. Not an eye for an eye, but a window for a window for a window. The best of what's human, not looking away, meeting the scorn of the warmonger, airman or terrorist, as he puts out an eye to spite his face, my face, your face, the public mask we share. How he laughs as we feel for the empty space, the mutilated socket. From tears shed by the other cheek, the grafted corneas of glass retrace a stained and bloodshot glory. Anxious to siren their story, our story, and history holds its ambushed breath, refocuses its rocket sights, dazzled by inferno light, waits for the all clear. The next one I really wrote for myself and I didn't think I would ever share it, but it seems so apposite here because um, I believe that Linda Chase was the driving force behind Poets and Players. And I only had the privilege of meeting her a few times at poetry school events, some of which were in Manchester. And I was, I, that she's one of those people that you just felt made life feel like it was worth living. And I was so looking forward to doing more with her, and, and although I hardly knew her. So when I heard about her untimely death, I did write a poem, and I think I would like to share it with you. And it's called Foolish Spring. The maximum stuck in the mercury, but it must be all of 30, and that's in the shade. April's gone wrong, putting barbecue cart before cuckoo, and Linda has left us. Tell me it isn't true. Premature chaffinches bursting into leaf. The plum blossoms bolted, dark mornings that end in siesta and Linda has left us. What's there for summer to bring? A sick joke of poems not written? Who'll pass round the jug of iced water or share out the last goddamn orange? Now Linda has left us. Uh, one more of mine that doesn't really need any explanation, I don't think. This one's called Unclassified. This is different, unblemished on the metalled road. The belly glistens cream, flecked honey brown, softer than cashmere fur. The slick head, fresh-blooded, at the curious nostril, eyes like tiny polished sloes. What is it? I can tell oak from ash, spot a pair of buzzards in wide orbit, lapwings flocking with the herdwick sheep. But I can't tease out the puzzle of this. I'll shortcut home trail mud across the hall, go to the second shelf, take down the fauna of the British Isles, flick through the photos, check the identification key. For now, though, I can't dodge. It's enough to wonder. 
that fine gauge of whisker, meticulous stripe of face, the hackle of the spine's defensive arc. Uh, and now I'd like to read you the winning poem again, now that I've spoken about it and you've had time to think about it. <laughs> Hearing things. Any other day, I'd have said these ledger lines meant nothing. But I'm haunted by long shadows, not my own. And that's a sign it's wise to pay attention to the piper of shrill tunes or lose them forever. I can't track bats now or descant crickets and chiffchaffs are receding at a rate of demi-semi quavers. So when I register a snatch of absent skylark, I skip the crutches, follow like a snake-charmed rat. And yes, there's a door of reckoning on the hillside. And no, I'm never coming back. <laughs>